Man, what's good? It's your brother, Fat Boy Bitch. Long time no see. Peace and blessings to all my brothers and sisters out there in the world. Your brother is back. It's your boy, Fat Boy Fish. What is good, family? What is good? God is good. He allowed you to make it to another beginning of, the, of your week. Man, you better act like you are proud of your father. You better take out your time of your life and show him how good he has been good to you by you submitting by you being honorable, by you being holy, by you living your life righteous. That's not, he's not asking. He, as I look at, at, at our father, the Lord of hosts, the most high, the father of Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. As I look at him and what he actually asking of any person, it's not a lot to ask you to be righteous. It's not. It's not a lot to ask a person to be holy. You should want to do these things on your own. I had a conversation with our father. Um... It was before the Sabbath had hit. And I told her, I think it was like Friday. I told our father, I said, I said to our father, I said, I want to love you with all that I am. It doesn't matter if it's in your rules or not. You know what I'm saying? As a child of God, you should want to love your father with every single thing that you are, everything that you have, and the being that you is, if God said it or not. And that's what I told our father. I'm like, I love you, father, and I'm going to do all I can for you, but... I want to love you with everything that I am, everything that I have, everything that I can do or not at all or not at all. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be faking up on God. I don't want to be faking up on Jesus. And what you see right here, this is something that is original. You know what I'm saying? My love for God is original. It's original. It's true. It's real. You know what I'm saying? It's a genuine love. So as I look at the father, all of his holiness and his righteousness, I want that family. I want that. I want that in myself being and I want to be acting like him all the time. I ask him daily family. I ask him daily every single day. He know I'm going to ask him to give me the strength to fight against this damn sin out here in this world. He not asking a lot of us. All right. I'm going off topic. Peace and blessings to all my brothers and sisters. Yeah, your boy fat boy. I'm back. We had a little topic for today. So let me go ahead and get into this because I have some other things that I have to do. For this day with this little time that I got right now. I ain't got much time pushing. So let me get our daily topics. Man, peace and blessings be upon to all my brothers and sisters out there in the, in the world. Man, black man, black woman, love your people. Step outside of yourself and express some love. You ain't gotta be, you ain't gotta be like the run, the rest of these people running around here acting like they ain't got no brain and they survive on wicked and that's all they can do. You can do better than that. Your father is asking much more of that from you. It's hard. It's harder to be a man who walks in integrity. It's a it's it's hard for a person to be moral. It's a hard for a person to be righteous at all that they do. But it is possible because we do have Christ. So lean on him, brothers and sisters. If you having a problem with that, look at your brother. I ask God every single day to give me the strength. I'm trying in life to be stiff necked towards my sin. You know what I'm saying? If I can be stiff necked being disrespectful to God, I, I, I'm pretty sure I could turn that around and be stiff necked to my sin. I see my sin on the left. I see it on the right. But if I could be stiff necked and just keep it moving forward, then maybe I can please him. Maybe I can because I long to please our father. Now, I just had some topics that I wanted to get into. And like always, I asked that. You're more than welcome to add a comment because I really want to see what you think, what you know about these situations and what you think that can be done in it. Now, first one, I think here in this country, if you work over 50 years and paid into in your taxes, that over that time period, you should have to not pay any more taxes if you paid into the taxes half of your life. So as I look like, as I look at income tax and taxes, any tax in general, any way how you would have to pay it, I feel if you don't, if you worked a job and you didn't work 50 years of your life and they didn't took out taxes out of that 50 years of your life, then that's it. You know what I'm saying? You should stop paying taxes be way before you you retire. You should. You should pay. You should stop paying taxes around like 50 years old. That's enough, family. Look at me. I've been working since I was 14, but I didn't have way more jobs before. I, 14. I can't even say that, family, because when I was in the fifth grade, I worked for the Fresno B, and that was an actual money that they was paying that they were taking taxes out of my money. But I didn't really get a, a real job to where they was really 
garnishing taxes out of my check until I was like like 14 because I work with the summer youth program here in Fresno California and I did that all the way till I was 18 either 18 or 19 but check it though family I've been paying in the taxes for a long time a long time family and as I look at any American citizen I feel that if you pay taxes for 50 years, that should be good off. It, it should be an age to work. It cuts off and your retirement shouldn't be it. You know what I'm saying? By the time you pay, you, you paying your taxes and you work 50 whole years, they should give you a break and let you retire that early. So when you hit 50, you don't have to pay taxes no more. So I want you to comment how you feel about that. What you think? Go ahead and leave your brother Fish a comment. Okay, next one. I think they should give police officers armor from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet so they can be protected and feel safe. Most importantly, a a face a, a face arm shield on their face. So as I look at our police officers and a lot of them, the the cowardly ism white supremacy ones that own that that ism supremacy, they like to kill people, family. They like to kill a lot of our people and. The, the most thing that they always say is, I fear for my life. I fear for my life. So the body cams, they came out. That didn't that didn't stop them from shooting our people. That didn't stop. And black people, we ain't the only ones that's getting shot by the police. We're just the most affected by it. It seems like this in this country, when when we as black people start making people aware of what's going on, then people finally want to put the light on it. But it's been five years. People been shining the light on the unjust shooting of unarmed people. I don't feel it's fair for anybody to get gunned down. I don't care what color you are. You know what I'm saying? I seen last weekend. It was the uh, the young Mexican kid that was shot and ran over by the police. Damn, family. Damn. Not only did they shoot this man like six times in the chest, they ran him over with a police car. So what part of that is them feeling like they life? And I'm not saying that all police officers, by no means, I'm not saying that all of them are ism people are evil people. I'm not saying that. But you have your percent in there. And if you didn't, you wouldn't have cases to where you're seeing people getting ran over and shot by the police. So... And you see the body cam that didn't really we thought when they got the body cam that it would have calmed down. They wouldn't be shooting the innocent people, but that ain't stopped them. That ain't. And for anybody who would say that I'm not telling the truth. Well, maybe you need to look into these matters for your own self or you probably plagued with, with a biased opinion your own self. So you lost. But anyway, now back to the uh, this body. I, I think that they should give them body armor. From the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. But the most important thing for them to have a whole shield on their face. That way, if somebody starts shooting at them in their face and their chest, it won't do nothing to them. I feel that it, it should be um, resistance to fire as well. So it has some type of fire retardant on it that resists this fire and they won't die for that. Now, if you give the police officers a full uniform body suit that bullets can't penetrate it they can't sit here and lie and sit there and say well my life is in fear my life you got a whole you got a bulletproof whole suit on you know what i'm saying from your 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 face helmet your shield all the way down your body you a bullet cannot penetrate that armor so you sitting there talking about you fearing for your life and it's fire resistance Come on, get at your boy. We need solutions up over here. And this is the only thing I feel that they couldn't fall back on. Well, I fear for my life. Well, hold on. You got a whole battle armor shield on face all the way to the bottom of your field, your feet. Can't nobody hurt you with that. Uh, that suit on. It's impossible. They should do that to the police officers since they fear for their life so much. I really feel that that would help a lot of innocent people from getting shot unarmed people that do not deserve to die they don't deserve to die so this is the solution that i'm putting forth to the police departments if they would give me an ear okay next one i think that the u.s army should build better armor for our soldiers a full face mask that can take heavy heavy fire and a suit arm that can withstand a landmine so they can better protect themselves on the field now this is the same thing i feel sorry for the troops family i feel sorry for the troops going out there and they be stepping on them landmines and getting blowed up in a million pieces so won't our government give them a whole battle suit that can withstand a land if they was to step on that landmine 
they'll just go flying back with that that suit that 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 protective armor from the from their face and i seen from the movies when you shoot one of the um one of the the army people in the head and they got that helmet on you can hear the bullets blink off of it bing, 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 bing. they need to go ahead and give them a whole face shield family why are they being cheap for not only should they give the 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 army members that's on on the on the fields in battle they should give them a whole suit family that can protect them from a landmine if they step on a landmine that it don't blow their body parts off it fully they gonna be hurt they is they gonna be hurt but it doesn't have to take they life it doesn't have to take body parts on off of them and when they come back they still be intact even though their mental might not be there but check it i feel that our, our soldiers they need a whole face shield to protect if that if that helmet family that helmet that they got is boss it is it works but if they can make that whole helmet cover their whole face and their whole neck I wouldn't have to worry about them getting shot in the face, family. They need to give our, our soldiers overseas who fight in any battle. I don't care, family. They need to give them a whole armored suit that can withstand fire, explosion, and bullets. It's a damn shame. I remember 1994 in the Gulf War when the soldiers be on the TV. They be talking. They be like, man, I had to go. I had to spend half of my money just to get a better bulletproof vest because the bulletproof vest they provide... The, the caliber of, of uh, bullets that they use and pierce the, the bulletproof vest that the United States government provide for. So you had all these soldiers that had to spend their own money just to protect their own self on the battlefield. Now, I'm not going to knock our government. I ain't going to knock our government. I just ask that our government gives our soldiers better equipment to survive out there on the battlefield. They can make them a suit. That can withstand a line a landmine. It might be a little bit heavier, but I would rather be weighed down than to be dead. That face shield all the way covered. They need that. They need a suit, a better suit to put on their body. You know what I'm saying? Some 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 20 21 2100 stuff. They need that suit to protect them out there in that field. And our government got enough money. Our government spends a lot of stuff. On military grade weaponry they can protect our our people out there family I really know that they can but they choose not to all right I'm off of that one before I start getting mad I remember before the time they made it mandatory you had medical insurance Obamacare and all I can say is that I feel for the elderly people who are retired and had to start working to pay off their their care. Some of them had to go go without just to have their medicines they need. I feel sorry for the ones who were working and had to get another job just because they could not afford the covers they got. And if you charge all this money for insurance and years go by and they're there they have not used the services they should get a portion of their money back i wish they cared about uh, the united states americans instead of seeing us as a cash cash in the bank so obamacare family i look at that bad i listen to our elders and what they say some of them was retired but they had to start working again just to get money to pay for their uh, they medical coverage that they're not even using family they ain't even using it i hear from the old people i spend 200 i spend 350 me and my husband we spend 450 and as i look at it i'm like damn you spend 450 a month on medical coverage that you don't even use then i hear the ones that that was that is working and they had to get another job just to pay for the medical coverage and we all know if you don't have the medical coverage at the end of the year they're gonna find you like two three thousand dollars just for you not having the medical coverage then depending on what company you work on or work at or what whatever you work for they're gonna find you not for having coverage and i remember before that time there wasn't nothing implemented like that to where it was mandatory that you have medical coverage. Okay, I understand that. Okay, I understand that we not we not Canada and we don't have no universal coverage for all of our citizens. I understand that too. But what I don't understand, if you make something mandatory and you see all these people stressing and working so hard to have something and you take it from them, at least make it a affordable. Some of our elderly people, you look at them and 
they got to go without eating their food just so they can have the medicines and the medicine man the medical coverage the people who who paying who charging these prices to give medicine they have lost their damn mind family it's all about money it doesn't matter that it's an actual person that needs that medicine or something bad is going to happen to them all they see us as a dollar bill and if that was not that case these things wouldn't be implemented on us so let's round this up real quick so if you make something mandatory and they have to have at least let them be able to afford it because not all american people can be able to afford it and then if you charge all these people all this money every single month and three years go by and they haven't seen a doctor for not even uh, uh, a, a stub toe you need to give them a portion of that money back because that's in the thousands that these people get to stick in their pocket and nobody was hurt nobody didn't see no medical um they didn't go to the doctor they didn't even go to the emergency but you're taking all this money from them and you get to keep it what part of that sounds fair what part of that is fair I feel that they should make medicines to where people can actually afford it and they can actually eat and have their medicine. It seems like in this country, they don't give a damn about the old people. It seems like they're doing stuff in this country for the old people to die off. It's what I feel like. I feel like it's euthanasia over old people because they're not taking care of our elderly and they already did all that they could. They already paved the way for us they already then put in social security on all that they already did all of that so you would think in your in your elderly years that you could kick back but nah they want our old people to work and work and work until they die that's a damn shame and then they tell me to speak lightly on my country but how can you speak lightly on the country when you see certain things happening and there is no resolution but then there are people still hurting over it Okay, I'll keep moving to the next one before I get mad. It's a damn shame, family. It is a damn shame. I don't care who you are or what you need to think about this. From what I have been seeing in the last five years is people taking the flu shot and it messes them up their whole life. And their life is never the same. Please don't take these and 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 infectional flu shots you don't know what could happen to to you it is better to fight through a sickness than to be handicapped for the rest of your life from a flu shot so man i really mean that family it doesn't matter from our children they get these they get these flu shots and then the next time you see them they are never the same these flu shots are making people handicapped family it doesn't matter how old you are. They, I, I didn't hold our elders sit there and tell me. I, I, well, I didn't see any people when they first started taking the flu shots. They took the flu shots and died. So you really need to think about this. And it doesn't matter how old you are. You could be old. You could be young. You could be a baby. You could be a young person. They get these flu shots and it makes them handicapped. Family, it's like it awakes something dormant inside of their genes that was suppressed. And that one flu shot, either it's, it awakened whatever was inside of them that was suppressed, that they body had taken care of. And then now with the flu shot, the flu shot has let it go and ramp it. And it's done turn these people into handicapped people. I would rather family be sick for two weeks than to take a damn flu shot and then i'll be handicapped i can't use my arms no no way i don't walk the same way my my speech is splurged i got autism you need to think about this family you really need to think about this before you go down there thinking that they really fit to give you something in that flu shot that can help you i would rather be sick for a month fighting through it in jesus christ's name father he gonna get me back on my feet i would rather take that sickly feeling for a full month if i had to than to take something that make me handicapped so my family out there you better be thinking when you take your kids into these walmarts and getting them flu shot you need to think about yourself you know what i'm saying they can give you something in that flu shot that can make you have autism that can make your body not act the way that it used to act and it all started from that damn flu shot i tell you right now family I'd rather be sick for two weeks fighting whatever in that damn flu shot than to be handicapped. You need to think about that, family. 
I don't know what the hell they doing. It's a damn shame. It's a damn shame that these people are not held accountable. And you see them on the infomercials. If blah, 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 yada, yada, if you took this and you are welcome to this, this, uh, this lawsuit money and, and they're paying out X amount of dollars and all you got to do. But then here go the clause in it. They're going to not only that you lose how you were, you will never be the same again. And you want to trade that for some funky lawsuit money? No, they can keep that money. I want to be able to be what God has blessed me with, with my body and not be crazy. Some of them, they lose their damn mind off of a damn flu shot, family. Y'all better be thinking about that. You better be thinking about that. But back to the commercial. You can you can go to uh and, and, and start your lawsuit and get money. They be messing up, family. They be messing up. But then... They gonna, they're gonna, you're gonna go for the lawsuit and then they're gonna make you hop over all of these leaps and bounds and still at the end of it, you won't receive nothing and your ass is still crazy and you still handicapped. You need to think about that before you go down there getting any damn flu shot, flu shot. It is better for you to fight that infection off than for you to lose who the hell you are forever, family forever they lives are never the same i see so many different stories and they like they have promising lives and i mean it's good they the, the outlook of their future look bright take that damn flu shot and now they're player plegic so you gotta think family is it worth it to me pfft, it, it, that ain't worth it family i would rather be sick knowing that one day i will be well again than be turning into a paraplegic or lose my damn mind family you don't know what they got inside of that thing that's going to awake something inside of your genetic code you don't know family you don't know it's not worth it family it is not worth it family think about that okay next one if we ever had martial law roll out in the street it would be because of protesters in the street running wild. Whatever happened to peaceful protests? Now all I see is civil unrest at the protest. No one is listening and when people are talking, they are just they're just arguing. Then the the violence comes and many people are hurt. These days people think violence is the best solution. There is no peace and peace talk. So I don't know, family. I, I've never seen a time in our history to where these protests where you have people in the streets tearing stuff down. I ain't never seen this before, family. Back in the day when Martin Luther King, you had the police sending out dogs, beating up people, shooting at people, doing all of that, sending out fire hoses and dogs and shooting people. But now nowadays, you got these protesters and they tearing stuff up. So if you ever really want to see martial if you ever thought martial law could happen these protesters in the streets tearing stuff up is going to be the reason why we have martial law in the streets don't nobody when when they be at the protest all you see is arguing ain't nobody listening ain't nobody trying to compromise ain't nobody trying to have a peaceful resolution ain't nobody have the audacity inside of themselves to even listen to the argument mm -mm. all they want to argue and then they feel as violence is the best way to get their point across for some reason. I don't understand this, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So if you see anybody that will have martial law hit the streets, it's these protesters. And, the, and as I see the years go by, it's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse because they're tearing stuff up. Now, for all you protesters, you don't have to tear stuff up to make your point across. You don't. You really don't. If you have something good, then you should be able to stand on that without rever re reversing to violence to get your point across. You should not have to. You really shouldn't. Okay, last one, family, and I'm going to go ahead and get off of here for today. Peace and blessings be upon all my family out there. In Jesus Christ's name, for he is the king. He is the lawyer. He is the Lord. He is the Lord, and he is a savior. God is holy. God is mighty. God is trust. God is trustworthy. God is true. I ask that. You put all of his holiness in your life. Let him let him let him show you how to be holy family. Let him show you how to be a righteous man. I long all the days of my life to be righteous. No matter if I'm here, if I'm there, no matter what I'm doing, family. I want to be like my father and my father is holy. My father is righteous. So I suggest that you you do the same. Be as he is. Now, last one. If trans if transgender people can use any bathroom they want, can we get a child only bathroom for kids only? No grown people. This way we as parents don't have to worry about rapists in the bathroom. Family, I really mean this family. 
I really mean this. I really mean this. If gay folks, if transgender people can want to go to any bathroom that they want to, they feel that they can break any natural law and they can do all this. Well, damn it. We can have a bathroom for kids only. You see all these stories. I'm not saying that all the transgender gay community, LBG community, I'm not saying all of them are rapists and pedophiles. But for this last year, I have been watching since they implemented that all the transgender males who have raped little kids in these bathrooms. So if this is the case and this is an actual scenario that's going on as as we as American people, can we have a bathroom for kids only? I mean that family can can some of you politicians out there listen to what the hell I'm saying because this is serious if transgender people can use whatever the hell bathroom they want can you get a damn bathroom for our kids only ain't no grown-ass people supposed to be in the kids bathroom under no circumstances I don't give a damn how bad you got to use the bathroom pee on your damn self defecate on your own damn self if that is the case but I ask that if the transgender community can have a bathroom for transgender or walk with whatever the hell, whatever the hell that they got going on. I ask that it be a bathroom specifically made for children only. No grown ass people, no men, no women, no gay, no bi, no, no, none of that. If you're if you're over the age of 15 years old, you can't take your ass in that bathroom. That is a kids only bathroom for the children. This is what I'm asking. This is what I'm requiring. I don't want to see these little kids going in these bathrooms, getting raped by nobody. If I catch you in the bathrooms doing anything to these kids, you better you better be you better be worried about the wrath of God. Because I will let him use me as an instrument. I'm telling you this right now. But back to this bathroom situation. I ask that it be a bathroom specifically made for children only. No one else. No grown people nothing just for them if it's okay for a man dressed up as a woman to go into a woman's bathroom you can make a bathroom for children's only if there is a woman who can dress like a man and go into a man's bathroom you can make a bathroom for children only only i don't want to hear no sorry sap ass story about it can't be done or it's not plausible i don't want to hear that shit i don't because it is possible and it can be done so this is what i'm asking now, family, I would like to thank all my brothers and sisters out there, all the people in the world that joined me with that nine o'clock prayer hour on Sunday night. You know, it, we got it popping all week long. You know what I'm saying? Come edify your father. Come glorify his name. Come be in spirit with the rest of your brothers and sisters out here in the world. A lot of y'all don't even go to church. I mean that a lot, a lot of my brothers don't even go to church. You can use this as a template in your life, family, to get you into that that church house. If you need to start, you got to start somewhere, family. You have to start somewhere in your life. And you more welcome, you more than welcome to come be a symbol with all your brothers and all your sisters. That's magnifying, glorifying, edifying your father's name. And we're saying blessings on all of you, especially for our people, because our people need it. And this submission time, you need it. If you only took 10 minutes a week, this prayer hour lasts six days long. If you do the time, that's longer than some churches that be open. You know what I'm saying? So if you if you having a faint heart on getting in that church, you need to start somewhere, family. You need to start somewhere to get with your father and get the, the motivation built up to be in assembly. You know what I'm saying? If you can't start in your own quiet place, then what good start can you have? Now... I ask that you come to this nine o'clock prayer hour and drop all your problems at the Lord's feet. I ask that you bring you be humble and you be submissive. I'm not I'm not twisting your arm to be in a symbol with your brothers and sisters. You don't have to if you don't want to. But if you're looking for a start to get you to build up this relationship that you need with the father, you got to start somewhere. So you're more than welcome to be in a symbol with your brothers and sisters. Now, this has been your brother, Fat Boy Fish. I got to go ahead and get up out of here, family. Peace and blessings to all my brothers and sisters out there in the world. Y'all make sure y'all have a peaceful day, night, evening, what have you. Until the next one, peace and blessings be upon you in Jesus Christ's name, for he is the Lord.